We are continuing on the top 10, Brachot, Dot 59. We're going to be doing 7, 8, 9, and hopefully 10 from Brachot, Dot 59. Number 7 is about the blessing for the new sun. Now, there is a blessing for the new moon. Every, every month, the moon wanes, and then it becomes a crescent moon, a new, a new moon, we call it, and then it waxes again. And Rosh Chodesh is basically connected to the beginning of the new moon, even though sometimes it, could, it doesn't have to be the exact same moment of the appearance of the moon, the moment is, as it's called, and the actual day of Rosh Chodesh, but it's approximately the same time. And the sun doesn't really, there is no such thing as a new sun in, in a physical sense, because the sun doesn't wax or wane. But yet there's this concept where the Gemara on the top of the Testament day says, Tana Rabbanan, the rabbis taught, if you see the moon, the sun in the beginning of its cycle, the moon and its strength and the planets in their orbit and the zodiac in their order, you say the blessing, voracious. He who makes the create the worker the or the the, the wonder the, the work of creation and when is it but here's where it gets interesting our standard Talmudic text has a quote from Abaya that says every 28 years there begins a new cycle a new solar cycle and the Nissan equinox falls in the hour of Saturn on the evening of Tuesday, which is the night before Wednesday. So to be honest with you, I'm not gonna get into the kind of details of what exactly that means, but I'll just tell you that there is a blessing. I've, I've made it uh, two times in my life so far, Hope, looking forward to make, making the third, maybe even a fourth time. But, um, what it is is every 28 years, we say that the sun is, is in its original place when it was created. Now, what's interesting about this conversation is it seems to be problematic with a ongoing debate in the tract at Rosh Hashanah between Rabbi Elazar and Rabbi Yoshua of when was the world created? Was it created in Nisan or in Tishrei? Now, on the one hand, it would seem that the resolution is found in the liturgy for Rosh Hashanah, which seems to indicate that we believe that Rosh, that Rosh Hashanah, which is in Tishrei, is the beginning, is commemorating the beginning of creation. Question then becomes: Why would you then make a bracha on saying that the beginning of creation, essentially the fourth day? of the fourth day of creation, right? That's that when the Ma'orot, when the sun and the moon were created, uh, would be in the time of Nisan. So it seems uh, not consistent. So that's a very strong question. So many people, not many people, but a number of people have asked it, come up with different answers. Um, that's one question. The second question on this is that there is another Girsa, there is another rendition, and it doesn't have this whole thing about the Tkufas Nisa, uh, Tkufas Nisan. It's not really about a 28 year period. They don't have that whole statement of, of, uh, of Abaya. It's just basically when you see the sun in its strength, meaning when the sun is really strong. So, question then would become. If there's two different readings of the text, why are we so eager to Paskin like one of the readings and, and A and B, a, a reading that contradicts the liturgy of, of uh, Rosh Hashanah as I was stated? So those are two questions. And 
the answer could be found in this concept that Toslos and other commentaries talk about in Kamala. That it could be that both are right, both Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Shur are right. The world is created in Nisan and in Tishrei. So, for example, it could be that in potential it was created in uh, Nisan, let's say, and then in actuality it was created in Tishrei. So, what is the potential versus the actuality? It could mean one of many things. It could mean um, the things that would set the world into what would eventually be the creation of Adam and Eve would happen in Nisan, and the actual Adam and Eve and and the history as we know it from there would be created in Tishrei. Now, how do you measure the six months of Nisan to Tishrei? So that's another interesting question. There's either it's just it's it's not yet time. It's called Seder's Man and the order of time, free time, or it's um, some type of Kabbalistic time. And there are ways of reconciling the the age of the universe uh, with the biblical account of the universe based on Kabbalistic uh, text that could that that could come out to the same uh, age that scientists are saying the age of the universe is based on this concept of the world. Uh, these these worlds that preceded our world it doesn't necessarily mean that they preceded our world in another place in another in another place in the physical world or in the spiritual world. It could mean that, but it could also mean that it's earlier stages of our existence that we can't yet call creation the way we would be able to describe the stories of Adam and Eve and so on and so forth. So perhaps that's what the Gemara is alluding to by not taking a stand or taking both sides, saying both sides are right, is that the creation story is much more complex. And this is really an allusion to the Gemara in uh, other tractates that deal with the idea of Maisa Merkava, Maisa Voracious, that there is a secret of creation. What we read about in Genesis is the external element of it, but it's up to the Kabbalists and the Torah scholars to understand it in a deeper way and within a limited capacity reveal some some elements of that secret. So that could be a little bit about that. And that could also be interesting of why, why we don't even bother just saying, make a blessing for the sun and its strength. Um, a, what does that even mean? And B, perhaps we don't want to make a blessing for the sun every day, so we reserve it to make it once a year, once every 28 years. Okay. That is number seven. That's Birch Tachama. Now we're going on to number eight. There are two blessings we make when something good happens. One is a Shachiyan. Shachiyan is when we, a, a, a blessing we make when we buy a new suit, when we buy a new house, when we, when we um, buy a talit. Uh, what about when you have a baby? What about when you buy a new shirt? What about when you buy a used car? What about when you, um, a um, million other things. So we're gonna be talking about Shekhyanu uh, a little bit more in uh, uh, number 10, as well as probably number one, and maybe number two of Daf 60. So let's start out. Let's let's begin to uh, answer some of these questions. Now, before we get into when you make a shachiyanu, let's just say that let's take an example of an inheritance. Somebody dies. Uh, somebody dies. I mean, uh, Ruben, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Yitzchak dies and, and leaves Yaakov an inheritance. If Yaakov is the only child, well, they would make a Diana MS on the death of of, of uh, Yitzchak. But it, when they find out that they actually got an inheritance, they'd make another bracha on a shechiyano, on, on the new wealth that they've acquired as an inheritance. What if there are two people, or more than two people, inheriting the money that Yitzchak left behind? So let's say Yaakov has a brother named Esav. So, so then Yaakov and Esav wouldn't make a shechiyano, they'd make barachat Hashem like in the Melech Hatov, if God is, is good and he, and he Causes others good for others as well. It's a share of good. So that would be one example. Another example would be if uh, if a couple had a baby boy. We could talk about a girl, but a boy where things girls were a little bit more complicated because people were um, 
in, in that time and place, people people felt it was really hard to have a girl. Um, but for a boy, they would make hatova hametif because both the mother and the father were were happy about that, and they would make that blessing hatova hametif. Now, um, so those are examples of what of what you would make hatova hametif for. Now let's go a little bit more into this idea of shachiana versus hatova hametif. There is some conversation about rain that rains uh, that 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 um, let's say you have a field, you would make Hatova Hametiv that rather than the Shachiana would arrange because. It's not just good for this particular owner, it's good for all the other people who own other fields. So the Gemara asks a question, is that true? Only one who owns land would recite Tatova Metiv, but there's a, a mission that says, if you built a new home or you, you bought new clothing, you make a Shechianu, Also, if rain falls, you would make a shachiano. So it doesn't say atoba mediv. So the Gemara answers that it depends. Just like a home, if you built a new home and you, you have a partner, so you have a partner in the house, so you make atoba mediv. If you have no partner, if you're living alone, you make a shachiano. The same thing would be with. Uh, the field. So if you have a partner in the field, you'd make Hatova Meitiv, but if you had no partner in the field, you'd make a Shachianu. My question is, what about the fact that, you know, you have, there, there's a lot of, there's partners on planet Earth in that, that section where it's raining, even if you only own your your property, your field independently, but there's somebody who owns another property independently adjacent to your property, you're both getting the same benefit of the rain. Wouldn't that be like two brothers who are inheriting something, even though they're both individually going to have the money in their own bank accounts, but it's coming from one source. So why don't we make, why wouldn't we say the fact that there's a joint joy of anybody who owns? So that's a good question. That's how I thought the Havamina might have thought, and then the Mascana might be that, well, no, it doesn't really work like that. If you have a partner in the actual field, then you make a Tova Native, if not, not. So... Now, there, there's there's much we we can understand about the nature of Shafiyani. So I'll just touch upon it. What what exactly is it that we're celebrating when we make a Shafiyano? And uh, just something to think to about: Are we celebrating? a time that we've reached or are we celebrating a benefit that we are um, receiving? So for example, when the rabbis originally talked about making a bracha on a new fruit, they would make a bracha when they saw a new fruit for the first time, even if it was not their new fruit, meaning it was connected with the two ways of looking at that. It was either connected to the, 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 the time. There's a new fruit that's now in season. It's not about them eating the new food, it's just about having it. And eventually, the, the practice became not to say Shachiano on seeing a new food, but only on eating a new food. So that would mean that when it comes to fruit, we wait till you actually benefit from the fruit rather than when you recognize a time that a new food has appeared in the world. But there is another opinion, such as the Shachanah Harab, the Al-Prabh Shachanah, and others who say, that, no, it's real. When it comes to a fruit, the shachiano isn't on the time; it's on the the excitement of a, a time that brings you benefit. The question then becomes: Why would you 
make a shechianu on a time of the new fruit when it's not your new fruit that you're going to eat? And the answer is people get enjoyment with anticipation. Like, oh, now is the season of a new fruit. I will be able to get the new fruit whenever I have a chance and I have the money, when I have the time. But they get excited about it as soon as they see it. So there's a certain sense of an anticipation that comes only with the visual realization of the new fruit existing. So it could still be some combination of time that brings a person benefit. So um, that's a little bit about the Shachiyano versus Hatova Hanaitiv. Um, and a little bit about the Shachiyano as well. We're going to come back to the Shachiyano. So I don't want to exhaust everything about Shachiyano on number nine. I mean, on number eight. I'll just say this one thing. What about a baby? Do we make today uh, a Shachiyano on a girl, a Tovamitim on a boy? And the answer is that many people don't make anything. Um, really, they should. They really should make a uh, Tovamitim on a boy. And a question of whether or not you should make it on a girl, but you can make a Shachiyano on a girl. But we find that people don't know the laws and don't necessarily do that for a variety of reasons. Sometimes I wouldn't just chalk it up to ignorance. Is it? Um, anyway, that's that's one of the one of the issues is that um, there, there there's some questions about it. Okay, so that's a little bit about eight. Let's go to number nine. Number nine is the idea that when you drink a, another type of wine, some specific second type of wine, in a sitting with good company with other people, you make the bracha hatova hametiv. Okay, so it's all about the company, the type of company you keep that brings you to make hatova hametiv. So let me read that in the Gemara. Let's say you change wines. Let's say you're having a nice red wine and then you decide you're gonna have a white wine. So you don't have to make a new bracha on the new bottle of wine, but you do, of hagafen, but you do make hatova right? Who right? Who is good and does good. So it's like a shared experience. So, so it's become a forgotten art to make a table. It isn't that complicated, but it's become complicated. But I'm going to tell you some of the key things you need to know. One, the second wine should not be any worse than the first wine. Preferably, it should be better than the first wine, unless it's a white wine. Then it doesn't have to be any better than the first wine, because white wine, if the first wine was red, is considered healthier. White is healthier than red. I don't know that that's a fact scientifically in general, but I do know that you get a little bit less of a hangover from white wine. So there's some health element of not affecting your headache and hangover. So it's got to be equal or better or white wine, the second. Some people say that you can't have had had the second wine out of the table. That's a matter of a disagreement. There are other opinions that say it's okay. There's some people who want it to be like in another room or as if it like appears somehow magically. That's not necessarily the case. Not, many of the posts don't agree with that. So it could be there. Maybe if you want to be choshesh, if you want to be concerned for that opinion, you put it a little bit to the side. You keep it in the refrigerator. You can. You can. Be concerned for that opinion because you don't want to make a brachla vatala. It isn't a brachla vatala according to other opinions, even if you have the second wine. If, for example, let's say it was closed. So even though it was out already, but it was closed, so you weren't drinking it, your kavana was to drink the first wine. Okay, so that's the first thing. It has to be a second wine, preferably equal or greater, unless it's white. The second thing is better if it wasn't in front of you when you made the original brachla on the first wine. The third thing is that you can't be drinking alone. You have to be drinking with other people. How many people? At least two. Obviously, the more the merrier. So it's a beautiful idea that you only get to make this hatel when you're 
when you're generally like the variety is what gives the blessing. In other words, there could be wine. Wine is good. You say, okay, what's wrong with just having one wine? One wine is good, but two wines are even better. And that's and 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 drinking on your own, okay, but to drink together is even better. So you're making hatova meta because it's exponentially increased the joy of having a lachaim when you're not just making your own lachaim. It's almost a weird thing. You don't even make a lachaim to yourself. You make a lachaim because you're wishing a brasa, you're wishing a blessing for life and happiness for somebody else. So that perfectly makes sense. Okay, uh, we've already uh, talked a number of details about hatova meta on wine. And I'll refer you back to an earlier doc. You can look up the many other details there as well. So that's number nine. Number 10 is when to make a shechiano on purchasing items. Well, when to make it. Many people actually think that you make the shechiano when you put on the item for the first time. So let's say you purchase a new suit. You should wait till you put it on and then you can make shechiano. In truth, you can make the shechiano as soon as you purchase it. There's a question of whether you should wait till it's tailored. You know, if you're getting it hemmed in and, and, and the waistline taken in or taken out, you can wait till that's all done. The truth is, if you didn't make the shechiano when you purchased it and took it home, you still can make the shechiano when you try it on for the first time. So that's when you make the shechiano. Then there's another question about what you make the shechiano on. So let's take a look at the Gemara. The Gemara says the following. Amar Avhuna, this is the end of 59b. Loishanu elosh ein lokiotzben. When do you make the shecheno? Well, let's say you got clothing, let's say you inherited clothing, and you don't have any of this type of clothes, uh, uh, clothing. Well, yesh lokiotzben ein tzachamach. But if you have this type of clothes, if you have the same uh, jacket, you don't have to make a shecheno. Rabbi Yochanan says, even if you have that same type of clothes, he already inherited that clothes. Now he got a second uh, a jacket of the same brand. He still has to make a shachiano on the second brand. Um, okay, so that's a little bit about the shachiano, and we'll continue. Though there's a lot more to say shachiano on top of top sixty. Thank you.